I think about beauty a lot. The science behind beauty is really interesting and I love to study it. Did you know that there are certain common traits that we can use to define physical attractiveness? Smooth skin, bright eyes, body proportions, facial symmetry. Did you know that pretty people have mouths that are 1.618 times wider than their noses? I guess it's the ideal ratio for the human face. And then there's the more subjective. Beauty comes from within. Confidence, humor, compassion, all inspire how we're perceived by others. And then there's me on the salon floor in the middle of it all. It's pretty cool. Oh, hey, I booked a one yeah. length for you at two o'clock with a new guest. It's in the schedule. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I like to rotate, you know, if a guest calls in and requests a specific time. I look on the calendar and see who has the most free time, whoever does wins, and right now you are winning. Yeah. Uh, dubious honor. <laughs> You'll get there. Hey, um, I've been working on my personal site, updated social media, but I need business cards. Do I handle that? Oh, I already ordered. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Um, so what else? Looking for more ideas. Referrals. Okay. It's all about referrals. Yeah, we straight up ask after each appointment. And, you know, some small personal touches. Like, I like to send my regulars handwritten notes in between appointments. Yeah, I've never had to self-promote like this. Yeah, you gotta build your brand. Oh, no, I mean, I like brand building. I just... Don't think I'm any good at it. Maya. Yeah. We are all here to help you. I mean, if you're busy, it makes the rest of us look good too. Yes, I, I love busy. Yes, busy, good. All right, my 9 a.m. should be here any second. Okay. Bella? Yes. Hi, I'm Alice, I'll be your stylist today. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Let me get you checked in. And could I get you a coffee or a water? Oh, water would be great. Water it is. Is this your first time at Studio Luma? It is. I read some reviews online and it sounded great, so here I am. Well, we're glad you're here. There you are, and my station is all set up and ready to go, if you want to join me. Thanks. I was married 10 years ago next month. Since then, I've had three homes, two kids, and an on-again, mostly off-again career. It's been the most frenetic decade of my life, and very little of what I have to give has been reserved for me. It's like, in the blink of an eye, I'm somebody else. You know, people say you wake up one morning, and you look in the mirror, and you realize you've changed. For me, it was dusting off the wedding album and looking into the eyes of someone carefree. I couldn't believe it. Who was that person? Is she gone for good? Protect that perm. Forget helmet head, plastic pompadours, hair on lockdown like a dollar store dolls. Today's casual wash and wear styles are all about movement. But that doesn't mean those breezy beach waves or coy curls come naturally. Sometimes we gotta rely on science to get there. You know, perms. Some guests go to great lengths to avoid perms, even when that's the best way to achieve their desired look. They still believe perms create frizz and dry out hair. So educate guests on ways to pamper their perms so they can press on without worry. Clarifying shampoo gently lifts away buildup it also renews curl pattern and resets moisture balance. Clarifying shampoo is good for routine maintenance of all hair, especially if guests use lots of product, swim in pools, or live in areas with hard or mineral rich water. Two types of conditioner used together provide moisture and protein needed to maintain healthy hair. 
Rinse-out conditioner balances pH to the hair's natural level. It also smooths the cuticle to prevent breakage, minimize tangles, and increase combability. All three are important for more porous, chemically treated hair where the cuticle might be roughed up a bit. Leave-in conditioner helps equalize porosity to get even curls and provides additional moisturizing. It's usually found as a spray or serum. Most conditioners sold in salons includes SPF, an especially important ingredient following a chemical service because hair is more vulnerable to sun's effects. Exposure is a major cause of damage when it comes to our hair. It can make strands weak, dry, and brittle, more susceptible to split ends. Products with SPF block sun's ultraviolet A and B rays, usually seen as UVA and UVB on product labels. Applying styling products to wet, damp hair allows for smooth distribution. This is important after a perm because hair is more porous. When dry, hair like this is more likely to grab and hang on to product, gumming up where it's applied. On evenly wet, damp hair, you can easily work products through. Mousse, spray gel, and gel are most common, and each has its own advantages. Mousse is lightweight and provides soft, flexible hold for natural-looking curl definition. Spray gel defines curls without stiffness. Gel is great for curl definition right at or close to the scalp. Styling products on fully dry hair boost a look or create hold. Pomade and wax refine curls, provide serious definition. Shine comes in spray or serum form. It reflects light for bright natural highlights and controls frizz by locking out moisture in the air. Finishing spray provides soft to firm hold for all day control. Even today's natural looking wash and wear styles sometimes require a little work. Helping your guests pamper their perms is a first step to achieving that effortless look. Tell me about your hair. Well, I've always liked my hair. I've never really had a problem getting it to do what I want. Wonderful. I think we're done here. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs> no, but your hair really is beautiful. So why are you thinking about a perm? Well, I used to get a lot of compliments when I had a perm. People thought it was my natural curl. It made me feel good. That's always the best reason. Well, it's been a few years, and I feel like I need a little bit of that feeling back. OK. So let's talk a little bit about the style of the perm. Would you like the curls to fall off your face or would you like them to frame your face? I'd prefer the curls to fall on my face and look natural. On your face? Well, <laughs> not entirely on my face, but I, I just feel like I need something to kind of... I'd like to suggest that we enhance your eyes. You have beautiful brown eyes. I think we should make that the focal point. What we can do is place the rods diagonally in a bricklay pattern, and that will make a more natural looking curl that will fall between your eyebrow and your cheekbone, which will really bring out those gorgeous eyes. I'm seeing the lines around my eyes more and more every day. Are you sure you want to draw attention there? I don't see the lines that you see. Uh, that's very sweet, but please feel free to be honest with me. I think we're all our own harshest critic. Oh, it's just, I used to feel more comfortable with my looks. Mm. Well, let's dial in the curl. What size were you thinking? I prefer a bigger curl rod. I think it looks more natural. OK. How about products? Well, I know I don't want any sticky gels. I prefer to shampoo, conditioner, let it air dry, no frizz that way. Products have improved since the last time you've gotten a perm. I would really suggest that you use a leave-in conditioner to help bring the moisture back into your hair and combat the frizziness. And also, a lightweight gel will really add some nice curl definition. Gels are different than I remember. <laughs> we have a wonderful lightweight gel here that will really combat that frizziness and define the curl. I'll use it when I style so you can see. Mm -hmm. well, sounds good. So when the perm is done, I'll use that lightweight gel. And I'm also going to use the serum and the wax and mix them together. That's called cocktailing. That'll help bring out a more natural looking curl. We will use the diffuser to help define the curl even more. And I can show you how to use that so you can do it yourself at home. Great. All right. I'd like to take a closer look at your hair. May I touch it? Of course. All right. Got lots of shine. Hair is in good condition.
Hair's not especially dense, so a perm will give her more fullness. I have trained myself to quickly process first impressions. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I look at people all day, every day. I read the current and I see the potential. Go on. Well, it's not so much about what's there as it is about what could be. And you start with a feature? Mm-hmm. Cheekbones, jawline, smile, eyes. Then what? Well, and then I design what I can control around that central feature. Shorter, longer, darker, lighter, sometimes straight, and sometimes with curls. You do this with everyone you meet? Pretty much. <laughs> How long does it take? Mm, about two to three seconds. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. It's a gift and a curse. <laughs> and with me, it was my eyes? No question. <laughs> Get her soaked and ready for shampoo. Clarifying shampoo to strip away any products that might be on there. I'll apply some leave-in treatment before I start wrapping rods. That'll restore her hair's pH. It's been nonstop every day for years. Either I didn't notice or I ignored what was happening to me because I didn't have any time to do anything about it. Some wrinkles I preferred not to see. Some gray I wanted to cover. But now I'm starting to get these little pockets of time. An hour here, an hour there. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm not entirely convinced that's a good thing. The brighter the light, the more obvious the flaws. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Um, oh, right, I sure. Just, <laughs> yeah, just prepping for a bricklay. Oh, that sounds really fun. Yeah, it is fun. Hey, so how do you do it? What do you mean? You know, choose the right rod size? Oh, um. Well, I still second guess myself, but you know, I think it's just being comfortable with the fact that you're not always going to be spot on. And elasticity tests really help. Oh, um, do you share? It helps me know how the hair is going to respond. You can't just be focusing on how stretchy it is or if it's going to break. You really need to pay attention to how it springs back. Um, when you say how, what do you mean? Um, well, if it springs back slowly, then you want to use one rod smaller than the desired look. And if it springs back normally, then you want to use the actual size. You know, I never really put it together that the spring back had to do with choosing the rod size. I always thought it had to do with how easily the curl relaxed. It does affect relaxing. The secret to long-lasting curl is to know how the hair is going to bend and twist and conform to the rod. The only way to know that is through an elasticity test and watching the spring back. Thanks for the tip. I'm kind of a geek for berms. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> Purple rods for Bella. I'll, I'll get this for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, the bricklay perm. No six or nine part sectioning like I would for a basic perm. It's a little more freeform. Size up my first subsection, which will be just shy of the length of the rod. directing the hair straight up from how it grows on the scalp. So it'll land half off base. Double flat end papers, capture the hair. Make sure those ends don't cluster together. Hmm, got some uneven ends here. Maintaining some tension and a firm hold of the hair. And wrap and roll down to the scalp. Use one hand to keep the rods held in place, and the other to snap the cap. Let the bricklay pattern begin. I'm visually splitting this first rod in half, and at that halfway point, I make a subsection for the next rod. The bricklay is all about spacing rods so they don't stack together in a perfect column.
Capture the ends, firm tension, half off base placement, pretty much the standard for perms. Everyone's head shape is different, so with a bricklay, you have to solve the puzzle of how those rods are going to fit on the head and how they're going to be offset from each other. Might mean a short rod here, a full rod there. This subsection closes the gap between two rods I just wrapped. That's the whole idea, wrapping rods so you don't have obvious splits and divisions between them. Making sure my body's centered on the work to see what I'm doing and where to direct the hair. It's also easier on me in the long run because I'm not overreaching and stretching. Half-off base placement. It gives some volume off the scalp before cascading into a curl. This spot is one of those weird pieces of the bricklay puzzle. To get the pattern to fit, I'll make a diagonal subsection. and a short rod so I can get the pattern to work in this narrow area off the hairline. Pattern really starts showing itself the further back I go on the head. After a while, it really does start to look like bricks stacked up for a wall. I keep noticing this texture that's been cut in her hair. Mm. I should have given her ends a quick trim before wrapping, because there's a lot of unevenness. It's not a big deal, it just would have made wrapping easier. Tip her head so I can get this teeny little subsection right by the ear. Sometimes I end up with these little guys. Didn't want to include the hair in the previous subsection, cause that'd be too much stress and strain on this delicate hairline hair. So it gets its own rod. A short rod, definitely. And some crazy lengths in this subsection. Grab what's longest and roll down. Sloppy end papers, too. Working down the back of the head. Taking a subsection that closes the gap right above it. Keeping the hair directed straight out from the scalp, moderate tension for the wrap. Just a couple more rows of perm rod bricks to lay. Sticking to perm subsection rules. Keep the width short of the rod's length, and the thickness the diameter of the rod. This is it, the bottom brick in the bricklay pattern.
I'll use some picks to stabilize some of these rods. All right, I worked it on the wrap. <laughs> now it's the chemical's turn to work it. Make sure her skin's protected with barrier cream. And some cotton strip, just to catch any wayward drips of perm solution. Use a T-pin to make a teeny tiny hole to control the application. A towel at her forehead, another insurance policy against drips, and apply. Same order that I set the rods. Three swipes of solution on each rod, top, middle, and bottom. Top, middle, bottom, move on. I wanna make sure each rod is soaked with solution. So being systematic with the application. Under the CAPTA process, how long depends on the manufacturer. To be on the safe side, I'll set the timer for the minimum processing time and check the curl. See where she's at here. Unwind a couple of rotations and see if I'm getting an S wave pattern off the scalp. Yes, yes to the S. Cover her back up and get her to the shampoo bowl for a rinse. Want the water temperature to be on the hotter side of warm for the rinse. Because the cuticle of the hair is already swollen from the chemicals, and the water can drive those chemicals a little deeper into the cortex before they've all rinsed away. Rinsing at least five minutes. Patient rinsing. And up from the bowl so I can blot. An overall blot of the rods to start, squeezing the water out. Really need to do this with each rod. One more dose of skin protection before neutralizing. Bury your cream around the hairline. And cotton. Applying neutralizer follows the same drill as applying perm solution, but Chemically, neutralizer's got a whole different job. Perm solution breaks the hair bonds. Rods make new shape, and the neutralizer tells that shape to stay put. Three swipes along the length of each rod and move on. The neutralizer only needs five minutes from when it's applied to process. Last rinse. This time, the water's on the cool side of warm. Want to start closing down the cuticle with the cooler water. Rinse for at least five minutes, then I can take those rods out. The nice thing about a bricklay is how blended the curls look. Not that she's getting big loopy curls, more like loose, lovely waves. Rinse the rods to get the last bits of chemical off. Then I can get on with finishing her hair. Doing okay? Oh, yeah, fine. How old are your kids? Seven and nine, boys. Wow, cute. 
but not so quiet? <laughs> no, not quiet. They're both at the same school this year, so it makes it a little easier. Gives me a little more breathing room. Oh, it seems like you've got it all figured out. No, not really. No? No, really. I'm, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> You're joking. Not at all. We want to trade places? You carry yourself well. It gives you a sort of grace. <sighs> that is extremely nice of you to say. She's combed out and ready for product. With perms, the right products can give shine and movement and hold on to the curl's shape. I'm starting with leave-in conditioner. Adds moisture and equalizes the porosity. Gel's next, it holds the shape. Scrunch it in. Diffuser to dry the hair while holding on to the curl. I promised her a cocktail of products and I'm going to finish with some wax and a touch of serum. Wax for definition, serum for shine. Wow, it looks nice. Beautiful amber waves to light up those beautiful eyes. I think we're all done here. Wow. What do you think? <laughs> it looks really good. It feels natural. I do love how the curls frame your face. Yeah, me too. Is there anything I can fix for you? Mm, no, I don't think so. Great. Well, then I would recommend the Studio Luma Shampoo and Conditioner for Curl Definition and a Leave-In Conditioner for Moisture. Will three products weigh my hair down? No, they're formulated to work together. It'll get you that bouncy curl you're looking for. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, and then for styling, I would recommend that lightweight gel. That'll help protect your hair and prevent frizz when it's drying. Then once it's dry, mix together the serum and the wax and just gently scrunch. Do I need both the serum and the wax? Mm, if you wanted to start with just one, I would go with the serum for shine and come back for the wax if you want more hold. Okay, I think I'll go with the shampoo and conditioner set and the serum. Wonderful. I can grab you your products up front. Okay, great. Ditch the pitch. Rethink retailing. Beauty horror stories have gone global. The worst racking up millions of views. Sure, some of that popularity is schadenfreude. German for finding pleasure in others' misfortune. Oh, ho, 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 ho. The beauty how-tos and not-tos trend at the top of online searches overall as people look to unlock its secrets. This tells you something. Women are searching anywhere and everywhere for advice on ways to be and stay beautiful. That's where you come in. Every guest who sits down in your chair needs help with her hair, a fact that doesn't change even after the cape comes off. As a trained stylist, you're in a unique position to be a reliable source to help guests avoid going viral. Retailing often gets a bad rap, something that's done by pushy people looking to cash in. Chances are good guests aren't thinking the same thing. About a third buy at least one product before walking out of the salon, and those who buy are much more likely to come back. Why? Consumer surveys show that guests want product recommendations and knowledgeable how-tos as part of their service, even if they don't request them. Makes sense. Spend big bucks on highlights, they want them to last, right? So rethink retailing, not as a sales pitch, but a valuable way to help guests make the most of their hair away from your chair. It'll take practice to feel natural. Here are some tips you can try out on friends and coworkers to build confidence. Ask open-ended questions during the initial consult, like, when was the last time you loved your hair? What do you like most about it? How well does your style hold up? 
What are your challenges? Use her answers to explain throughout the service what you're doing and using. Don't list ingredients or use industry jargon. Focus on how specific products benefit her hair and styling preferences. Being effective requires that you know your salon's inventory so you can clearly and simply explain what's what. Begin at the bowl. Let her know what shampoo and conditioner you chose and why. Keep up the conversation at your chair. Explain leave-in conditioner, styling, and finishing products. Hand her bottles to read labels and get to know what's inside. It's a psychological quirk common to us all. We need to smell it, smear it, to buy it. By the end of the service, your guest will know what products you used and why, how to apply them. At that point, all you have to say is, these are my recommendations. Want to try them out for yourself? Then it's her decision, removing the possibility that she feels pressured or conned. The web is littered with garbage information guests can't rely on, which is why you matter so much. Helping guests understand their hair, including the products that are right for it, helps them break through groupthink to form their own singular sensational style. Every once in a while, you meet the right person at the right time. They take care of you in that moment you need it most. Maybe without even knowing it, they say the only thing that can fix what ails you. I feel inspired. It feels good to reclaim a little piece of myself. Here are your products. Oh, great. And I would love to see you again in eight weeks for a cut and to check up on the perm. Would you like to schedule that now? Sure. Uh, Friday mornings are usually best. Wonderful. How is Friday the 26th, 9 a.m.? Yeah, that'll work. Excellent. Got you in. And if you've been happy with your experiences today, I would love it if you tell your friends. Yes, very happy. Glad I read the review. Glad I came in. So glad I met you. Thanks, Bella. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Everyone looks at beauty differently, and everyone has a different form of beauty inside them. The more we try to deconstruct it, to break it down, the more we realize it has to be the sum of its parts. The hair, the skin, the eyes, the grace, the kindness, the wisdom, all has its own place in the complete picture. A wise person once said, beauty is truth's smile when she beholds her own face in a perfect mirror. I take that to mean that being beautiful means being true to yourself. And I really like that.